Hi and welcome to another video by Jim the Car Guy. Today as you can see behind me we have an older Toyota. We'll be changing the front and rear brakes on it. So let me bring you in there. I'm going to show you what it looks like and then we're going to get this job done. So uh, let's take a look. A little bit of rusty mess trying to get this off here. But basically what we're going to do is we're going to come in the back over here. We're going to disconnect that bolt right there and right there. We're going to push the piston back in on the caliper and we're going to relocate that off to the side. Then we're going to come up underneath the bottom right here and we're going to take out that bolt right there and one more up inside over here. Now over here this bolt here is a little bit tight to get in there. You can't get in here with a regular ratchet so we're going to use an extension on this to get that bolt out right there. So uh, alright let's get set up and uh, let's get started. First thing we're going to do is put the pry bar in and we're going to push that piston back in as far as it can go just to make sure that the slide pins are actually still sliding back and forth nice and free. So it's nice and free. The pistons will all the way pushed back in. Now if you can't push the piston back in, it's no big deal. You can get in there later with a C-clamp or a tool to push it back in, but this saves a little bit of time by doing it this way now. Alright, if by chance you're turning it, and as you're turning, you see that bolt right there started to rotate? If that bolt is rotating, you can hold this with a wrench, it's probably a 14 millimeter, if it starts to spin. Alright, now we just relocate the caliper off to the side. Now, if you have a hanger, you can hang it from the top up there, so it doesn't uh, actually dangle. Sometimes they're a little bit tight and it's tough to get in there, but you can just uh, support it. Nowhere on here, just stick it off to the side somewhere. Okay. All right, next thing we're going to do now is we're going to take out those other two bolts in the back the one here and the one up top right there. Now, the longer the ratchet, the more leverage you're going to get out of it. It'll make it a little bit easier getting it off. And just so you know, those are 14 millimeter bolts as well. Now this is the one that you need that longer extension on to be able to get in there. But with the longer extension, you also need more force to break it loose. Okay, you just slide it right off the car, and as you can see, this thing is, this is pretty rusty. That's why the, the pedal on this one pulsates like crazy. Now, there's different ways of taking this rotor off. You can get in here with a hammer and just bang on it a little bit, or you can use a puller to pull it off. We're going to try banging it first, and we'll see how that works. If it doesn't, then we'll do it the other way. Now, when you pull this off, you want to be careful when you take it off that you don't damage the parking, parking brake shoes in the back, especially when you see something this rusty. Chances are the, uh, the, uh, the parking brake is going to be fairly rusted as well. Okay. Now, sometimes if you rotate it, you'll be able to break the rust loose inside. Sometimes you can't. We'll see how it goes. We want to just be careful not to damage those parking brake shoes. I'm just going to push it back in a little bit now. And by rotating it, you're actually taking the rust off inside there. But sometimes you just got to play with it back and forth till you get it to pop off. So that's what we're going to do. Now, if, if by chance you can't get it off, which we're going to continue to try it, but if you can't get it off through this hole in the center right here, you can get in there and you can back off on the parking brake shoes, but uh, we'll see how it goes. All right, so now when you, when you can't get the rotor off, what you need to do is to go in by the star adjuster, which is either on the, on the bottom or on the top. On this particular car, it's on the bottom, but if you look into that hole, you'll see the star adjuster. So what we're going to do now is we're going to back off on the adjustment so we can get that rotor off. You 
you can hear a clicking inside there, so you know you're going the correct direction. All right, let's give it a shot. We'll see what happens. Okay. I'll show you what that star adjuster looks like. But what happens is, in here, on the side right inside here, you see all that rust in there? That's what actually is holding the, uh, the, the, the rotor on the vehicle, is all of that rust that you see on the outer edge right there. All right, and the star adjuster I was telling you about is actually right inside there. You can see it. It's just a star wheel. You get in there with a screwdriver, and you rotate that. And what it does, it'll take off the adjustment on the parking brake shoes. And as you can see, these parking brake shoes here are dead, but this guy is as tight as a crab's rear end, and he's not going to go for it. So, all right, we're just going to continue. We'll, we're going to clean up the face right here of the hub so that there's no issues when we put it back together, and uh, then we'll continue. <laughs> We're just going to clean this up a little bit, and once it's clean, then we'll come back and put it back together. Okay, now we have it all cleaned up, we're going to put the rotor on. You want to make sure when you put the rotor on that you're, that you're lining up with the correct hole. As you can see, there's all different sizes. The bigger one is where you want to actually have the adjuster located. And now we're going to turn it and bring it down to the bottom where it was. And now we're going to come in here with a screwdriver, and we're going to adjust it right here until it has slight drag on it. And then uh, once we have slight drag on it, then we'll, uh, we'll put the brakes back together. Now we are going to clean this up with brake cleaner, just so you know, but we haven't done it yet, but we will be doing that. So, uh, alright, let's adjust it and put some drag on it, and, uh, you know, we'll be okay. Alright, once you have drag on it, you should be able to turn it and hear it dragging on there. You know, if, if you tighten it on too tight, you can just back it off, but that, that's perfect the way it is right now. Alright, next thing we're going to do now is we're going to take the brake uh, mounting bracket, this, this bracket here, we're going to take these, these brake pads out and we're going to lubricate this and put this back together. Um, just so you know, we are not going to change the hardware because this guy brought his own parts in and it does not come with a hardware kit. Okay, now you can see we have the brake pads back inside the mounting bracket, and we did lubricate up every place that the brake pads are going to touch. Hang on, let me grab that light. Okay. You want to catch both bolts in there first before you tighten up either one of them. Otherwise, if you tighten the one up and the other one is not in, it might be slightly off and it won't, uh, won't tighten up. So we're going to catch both of them by hand first. Now we have them both caught, we're going to tighten them up now. And again, we're going to catch the bolts, both the uh, top and bottom before we tighten either one of them up. Now you can see how that, that slide pin is rotating. If you just hold it with a wrench if you need to, or you can just hold it with your hand until you can tighten it up all the way, you know. So that's it, backs are all done. So let's just go over what we did. Okay, we cleaned up the, uh, the hub right here where the, where the brake rotor is going to go on. So that's nice and clean. We put that back on. We put our new mount, uh, mounting bracket back on and we tightened up both the upper and the lower 14 millimeter. We lubricated the slide pins inside here and then we reattached our, our caliper back onto the vehicle here. So that's it backs are all done. We're going to now continue up to the front. And of course, before we did any of that, we actually adjusted the parking brake to bring it back up again as well. All right, so uh, all right, let's go up the front and uh, we'll continue in the front. 
Okay, now the front is basically going to be exactly as the rear one was. We're going to come in here with a little pry bar. We're going to push that piston back in as far as it can go. We're going to remove that bolt there, this bolt here, and then we're going to relocate this caliper off to the side. We're going to leave it suspended up underneath here with the hanger so it's not hanging. And then we're going to come up underneath the bottom right here, and you'll see that bolt right there. That one sound, feels like it's maybe a, a little bit bigger than the back one, so maybe a 17 or an 18 millimeter. We're going to take out this one as well underneath the bottom here. We're going to take this bracket off of the car itself, and then we're going to take the rotor off. Now, we're going to try hitting this one and knocking it back off like we did with the rear one. But if this one doesn't come off, we can just screw a bolt in right through here and here, and we can pull the rotor off the hub. Uh, but we'll see how that goes. So, uh, all right, let's get set up and uh, let's get started. Oh, okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to try to get in here and push that piston back in. It might be a little tight doing it, but if we can't push it back in, then we're going to use another tool to push the piston back in once we have it off. All right, so now we're going to take out those two bolts in the back of the, uh, of the uh, caliper itself. And we're just going to relocate the caliper. We're going to suspend it from the uh, from the strut if we need to. Now you can see this one here has these little clips on it. These little, uh, they look like a wishbone here. Those are actually spreader clips to actually pull the brake pads apart so they're not constantly dragging on the rotor. So we are going to uh, reuse those. Now, remember I told you about that bolt in the back? That's like a 18, 17, 17 millimeter. And we're going to take out the one off the top as well. Now you can see those brake pads are very thick, but the reason that we're changing them is because the brake pedal pulsates like crazy. And I'm going to show you why. You saw what the back rotors look like, and I'll show you in a minute what the front rotor looks like. You can see what they look like. Now this is out of round up inside here. You can see where it actually, that would cause the pulsation. Alright, so let's try to get that rotor off. We're going to whack it a few times. That's it. All right, so we're just going to come in here. We're going to clean it, this hub up a little bit in here as well. And once we clean that up, then we'll come right back and put it back together. Okay, now remember we talked about before trying to push that piston back in and we couldn't push it back in. So what you do is you put the brake shoes back inside or the brake pads back inside the caliper and you take a tool. This is just one of the tools. This one's made by Snap-on, but... You can use lots of different tools they make out there to push the pistons back in. You just slowly turn it in and it pushes those pistons all the way back into the bore as far as it'll go. And then once they're back in, then we'll, uh, we'll continue and put the, uh, uh, the new brake pads into the mounting bracket. Okay, now that we have the hub all cleaned up, we're going to put the rotor on. Now we are going to take brake cleaner to that and clean that one more time. Before the, uh, before the vehicle leaves. Now we're just going to screw a lug nut onto it to hold the rotor in place so that we can mount the mounting bracket on there without any kind of uh, movement of the rotor. Alright, now the brake pads, we actually have them in the mounting bracket already. We lubricated every place that the brake pad is going to touch. We pulled out the slide pins and we cleaned them and lubricated them and put them back in. And we also uh, put the, uh, the spreader clips back on as you can see. All right. Uh, we switched over also the uh, the indicator, it's the disc indicator, when it wears down, so that we know when it uh, needs brakes in the future. Now we're just going to reinstall those two bolts in the back that we previously took out. You want to catch both of them first before you uh, before you tighten up the uh, the mounting bracket. As you can see, sometimes a little bit rough to hold the brake pads in place because the spreader clips cause the brake pads to pop out of the bracket. Now 
I'm just going to tighten up the two bolts in the back. Now we're going to take our caliper, we'll put it up over the top. You may have to push the slide pins in just to get it over the, uh, the uh, caliper over the top of the mounting pins. And now we'll catch both of the bolts on the bottom. Those are the 14 millimeters that we previously took out. Same thing up top. You want to catch them both again before you tighten up the one bolt all the way. You want to make sure both of them are caught and you want to make sure your spreader clips didn't pop out of the brake pads themselves. Again, if you try to tighten that bolt up in the spins, you can hold it with a wrench, or sometimes you can just hold it with your hands. Okay, so let's just go over what we did. We cleaned up the face underneath here, where the rotor is going to fit on. We cleaned that up, got all the rust off of there. We mounted our rotor on. We temporarily temporarily put the lug nut on to hold it in place. We are going to clean this off with some brake cleaner. We actually reinstalled our mounting bracket. And when we put the bracket back on, we tightened up both of the bolts on the bottom, 17 there, and also the one up on the top here as well. We lubricated every place that the brake pad is going to touch. We made sure that our clips are put back on that were previously on there. We installed our spreader clips back on there, and then we mounted on the uh, caliper itself back onto the mounting bracket and made sure that those bolts are tight. So that's it. This job is done and ready to go. Okay, so that's it. You're all set. All right, the only thing you have to keep in mind is now when you get in the vehicle to first drive it, uh, you're going to step on the brake pedal and the pedal is going to go right to the floor. You want to pump the brake pedal probably four or five times to get that brake pedal to come up a little bit higher. What you're basically doing is you're pushing that brake piston back out to come in contact with those rotors. So if the piston is out, it slowly pushes in until it takes the two brake pads and squeezes them against the rotor. So uh, it's very important that you pump that pedal up before you try to drive it. Otherwise, you're going to get in the vehicle, you're going to back it out or go forward or whatever. You're going to step on the brake and it's going to go right to the floor and you're not going to be able to stop the car. So you want to make sure you pump it up before you drive it. And that's it. We'll throw the wheels on, take it for a ride, and it's out the door and on to the next one. All right, as always, thanks for watching. See you on the next one.